This here is my 2008 Nissan 350Z. And what I want to run through today is actually talking about if this car can actually be used as a daily in 2022. With the way the world is moving forward, cars like this are becoming more and more obsolete. Doesn't mean they're completely gone, but they are getting rarer. Now this car has just done, it's just ticked over 107,000 miles. So it's not by any means the lowest mileage Nissan 350Z around. Although to be fair, that doesn't really worry me in all honesty. I'm not overly fussed when it comes to that um, mileage for me. I'd, I'd much rather go based on the car than the mileage itself. We're gonna run through things like the reliability, we're gonna talk about fuel costs a little bit, the actual fun factor itself, uh, and also, you know, generally what it is like on a day-to-day -day basis. And before we get started, a quick couple of points about my day-to-day -day use. So I do around 350 to 400 miles uh, per month, so much, much lower than the average, which is about 10 or 12,000 miles a year. I do probably around about five, five and a half maybe. So that is something to take into consideration, but at the same time, it's still, uh, this is just from my experience. So. You can sort of take it based on um, that information, maybe adjust it slightly for your own personal, uh, your own personal situation. Reliability-wise, the 350Z, the later ones, which this one is, which is a HR engine, uh, they were significantly adjusted and significantly changed from the DE, with around about 80% components actually being different and upgraded from the DE model. Now this did come with some reliability improvements. I've had two of these cars now, and in all honesty, both have been absolutely fine. Touch wood, obviously, uh, but they have been absolutely all okay. There's been nothing that's, that's really gone uh, majorly wrong with any of them. In fact, nothing really has. I think the, the closest thing that I've had to do with this car at the moment is put a drop of oil in it, which I had to do with the old one as well. The DEs were a little bit worse on oil than uh, the later HRs were. And uh, it is going for a service later in the year, so that's something maybe I could do a, a, another update on how the actual service went. But from the car itself, since I've had it for the last seven or eight months, it's been absolutely fine. Uh, and again, that's been doing around about 350 to 400 miles every month, some a little bit more, some a little bit less, but obviously that's just taking the average. So yeah, all in all, reliability wise, absolutely fine. Can't say that I've had anything wrong with these cars. And from a lot of people that I've been speaking to, people that have owned 350s as well, that seems to be the same thing. They just tend to be quite reliable engines and just reliable cars in general that will truck along. Now, fuel currently is stratospherically high. It's insane how high it is, and it doesn't show signs of it actually going down and actually becoming any cheaper for us. So probably the most important thing is fuel economy for this car. Now, fuel economy for me... Uh, again, based on the mixture of driving I do, so I don't drive this car overly fast all of the time. I don't drive it aggressively. I try and drive it as frugally as I can. And to be fair, it doesn't really, or it does tend to do a half decent MPG for the car that it is. It's never going to do 55, 60 to the gallon. It just isn't going to happen uh, because it is a big three and a half litre V6. I get around about 30 to 32 miles over the course of a tank. I can't remember for the life of me what that works out per tank in terms of mileage but that's what i normally see if you drive this car sensibly you can get half decent mpg out of it now bear in mind like i said that 30 to 32 i do do a mixture of driving occasion i'll have a bit of a blast on a b road or something i'll go out for a drive on an early saturday morning so taking that into consideration 30 to 32 isn't all that bad now depending on the driver that you are obviously that could mean you get maybe more that could mean you maybe get uh, significantly less but that is just taking it from what i normally drive the the longest commute i do is about 20 miles um <clears throat> really i don't do anything further than that unless i'm going somewhere on a longer run of you know 100 miles plus and that 20 miles is a mixture of uh, town driving that's a mixture of a couple of a roads a couple of b roads as well and that will still do around about again if i was to drive sensibly between 32 and 33 on a run now this is where it becomes interesting because on a run, I've seen this car upwards of 37 MPG. It doesn't sound like a massive amount, but take into consideration what this car actually is and the fact that it's a big three and a half litre V6, you have to say that's relatively impressive and that's pootling up the motorway at 65, 70 miles an hour. So you're not uh, driving too slow, you're not driving at 55 mile an hour everywhere, but it is something that you can do if you try. The other good thing about this car though, and the fact it does have this much power, is you don't actually need to do anything when it comes to driving this car at any form of pace. You can drive this car 
so, so lightly and, and so, so delicately, and you'll still keep up with normal traffic. It's got the low down grunt. It's got enough power that whenever you need to ex and to use that power, you can do. But even then, you don't have to tr throw it down three gears and rev the absolute natters off of it. You simply don't have to. If you keep this car under 2,500 RPM, you'll keep up with normal traffic every day of the week, and you won't have to do anything at all above that because this car will just do it it will um, tell you that it has got enough grunt low down so you don't have to worry about that sort of pace now practicality wise uh it's a two-seater sports car it's not going to be amazing it's not going to be an estate car it's not going to be a touring a bmw 5 seater or anything but if you're frugal with space and you're frugal with packing if you go away you can actually do a fair amount uh myself and the missus we've gone to uh we've gone away for uh, several days multiple times uh, in this car and it's been absolutely fine it's been no problem at all if you haven't seen the boot in the nissan 350z it is well it's okay except you've got the massive rear strut race in the middle again for the life of me don't understand why they put it there but by the by that's what they've done and you have to work around it. It does take up a fair chunk. It was like 50% of the boot, it seems like. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're taking suitcases and stuff because a big suitcase simply won't fit in the back. But you've got some cubby hole. You've got some storage areas behind the car or behind the seat, say. You've got, well, there's actually four little storage cabins behind the, uh, behind the seats, which is... They're surprisingly big, surprisingly deep. You can fit quite a lot of stuff in there. Um, so that's some areas where you can use. Uh, again, there's sort of pockets everywhere. It doesn't have a glove box, but you've got the little sort of center glove box in the middle. So you can use this car quite easily for going away, I think, personally, for about a week. Uh, any more than that would be a little bit tricky. But um, yeah, if you're frugal with packing, you're frugal with actually what you take, if you do go away anywhere, you can, you, you'll be absolutely fine. Uh, shopping wise yep does the shopping absolutely fine so you can put stuff in the front of the car you can put stuff in the boot that doesn't matter but practicality wise yeah it does what you would expect from a two-seater uh, gt sports car it does have enough space to go away but not enough really to do anything especially if you're going to try and go with uh, something along the lines of uh, going away for multiple weeks at a time so This car, when it was new, developed 310 horsepower there or thereabouts. In all honesty, I am quite happy to say that it's enough for the road. You don't need any more than that. If anything, it's too much for the road, to be honest. Um, you just don't need that sort of power. It's fast that you can keep up with pretty much anything that you're going to see on the road. There's a couple of things that you may obviously struggle with if you find like a GTR or a Porsche or something. But then again, it's... You know, anything over 300 brake is just simply too much. These modern hot hatchbacks that come up with, you know, 400 horsepower now, which is what they're pushing um, a lot of the time now, and they're going to be even more than that soon. It is just something that you can't use on the road. Um, there's a time and a place, obviously, for when you can use a little bit more of that power. Majority of the time, though, it's not it. Uh, this does have enough power, though, that the fact that you can just keep up with any traffic and it's absolutely fine. You don't have to worry about utilizing, you know, and revving the nadges off of the car any time at all because it just has enough power that you can sort of waft along um, and as long as you keep it below two and a half three thousand rpm it's absolutely fine you know you can keep up with traffic no problem at all in terms of the balance the way this car handles it's on stock suspension well this one is anyway it's on stock standard spring standard suspension you name it it is standard and the first one I had felt a little bit more, a little bit softer. I don't know if they did any suspension changes between the first one that I had and this one, um, which was a gap of about four or five years. It does feel a little bit firmer, it feels a little bit sharper. So whether that means they've done something, I don't really know. Um, but the car itself, it's not too soft. Um, it's a GT car at the end of the day, so it is designed for comfort. I can drive happily long distances. I can travel two, two and a half hours and have done in this i've traveled three and a half four hours at a time even and it's been absolutely fine i haven't come out with a massive backache and and you know on standard suspension that is if you change the suspension yeah it might feel a little bit obviously will feel a little bit choppy uh, but suspension wise absolutely fine when you start getting into some of the winding sort of b roads that's when it does come into its own the slower b you know the slower sort of corners it can struggle a little bit because it is heavy it's about 1550 kilos so you do feel the weight, especially if you have know, heavier braking zones. It's a tight corner, you feel the roll come in. Where this car really excels though, is the fast sweeping 
uh, B roads. That's where this car really comes into its own because you don't have to travel all that far to find one, um, in all honesty. And to be fair, where you're able to actually utilize, not all of the power obviously, but you can do a couple of different driving styles I've always found. You can either go through the gears and the car will reward you for that. The car will reward you for going through the gears. It's got a lot of power at the top end. It doesn't really drop off. You don't feel a noticeable lack in power. But as well, if you are on that sort of fast winded B road, you can leave it in fourth, third or fourth, and just let the car do its thing. It's got good enough power low down, it's got good enough power up top, and you can realistically do a lot of it in one or even two gears because you can utilize all the power range. So in short then, is this car something that you can still daily? In, in all honesty, it does depend, obviously, on your scenario. Personally though, I think, I mean, I've been doing it for the last seven months and it's been absolutely fine. But don't get me wrong, it isn't a cheap car. There is a lot of, there, you know, lots of other cars are a lot, lot cheaper. But if you're frugal with the car itself and you can restrain yourself and limit yourself from driving you know, too aggressively all of the time, it is a car that you can realistically use every day. If you're happy and comfortable with getting about 30 miles to the gallon average, and that fits with something that you're able to actually work with, then yeah, there's no reason why you can't do it, in all honesty. Again, everyone is different. This is just my own personal experience, but the, this car has been great. I've loved it. It's one of my all time favorite cars. I've wanted one for years and years and years. And even though fuel prices and everything is going up and it's, it's all just an insane amount of money, um, it's still something that I'm happy to do for the moment uh, and will happy to well, well, try and do it for as long as I possibly can. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll hopefully see you in another video very, very soon. Take care.